I'm joined today by two of my co-authors uh, on this project, Emery Montague and Scott Fisher. And we're gonna kind of take you on a little bit of a journey that's transpired over a number of years that's kind of culminated in where we are today. And I put this slide in here because to understand how we got here, we have to kind of go back several years and that this current project started off as a partnership uh, with the Structural Engineers Association of Northern California, as did a previous project. The 2000 IBC introduced the current method of calculating concrete breakout known as CCD or concrete capacity design. And that was not adopted in California until the 2007 California Building Code adopted the 2006 IBC. And people really started to take notice of the impact of these provisions, particularly uh, as it pertained to um, sill bolts in light frame construction. The design capacities were so low based on the design equations that uh, the number of bolts you had to put into a standard shear wall was kind of bordering on, on the, um, the ridiculous. And so we were approached by SEOC and um, we decided to work with them on testing sill bolts in concrete to reestablish the values, which led to code changes to what we have today. And that project we're happy to say resulted in a 2011 uh, Award of Excellence in Structural Engineering by the Structural Engineers Association of California. So fast forward a few years into the 2011, 2012 timeframe, and we started looking at a different problem uh, that was starting to face areas of urban densification. And that is um, podium structures where there was three, four, five stories of wood light frame over a concrete podium, narrow, narrow shear panels or just shear walls with high overturning demand. We saw a lot of typical details centered around a uh, continuous rod system, um, such as the ATS system that Simpson provides and uh, others from other manufacturers where those rods had at their base a detail that look, would look something like this. You had a termination of that continuous rod system to a uh, cast in place anchor bolt. And it was common to put the termination of that inside the concrete as opposed to below the concrete so that it could be protected from um, uh, you know, a number of things that could upset its performance. And as calculations were done to try and get a handle on what kind of demand these situations um, would develop, we looked at a number of different scenarios, uh, those scenarios being three-story, four-story, or five-story uh, structures over concrete podiums. And you can see there uh, the description of the likely rod systems from a three quarter inch, uh, we'll say mild steel rods with an ultimate uh, stress of 58 KSI, all the way up to very strong uh, inch and a quarter diameter rods with an ultimate stress of 125 KSI. These resulted in demands, what we're calling here 1.2 times the nominal tensile strength. And there's a reason for that we're gonna discuss in depth. You'll think you'll understand it quite well by the time we're done today. And 1.2 times the nominal tensile strength would result in these uh, values you see up there on the screen, anywhere from 23 kips all the way up to 138 kips. Whereas if you calculate the nominal capacities for these situations at the edge or away from edges in the last two rows, um, and I apologize, there is a pointer function that is supposed to work for me so I can kind of highlight those and that uh, does not appear to be uh, working for me at the moment. But if you look at those last two columns for edge capacities or uh, here's my pointer, edge capacities in this column or away from edge capacities over here, you'll see that while we may need upwards of 138 kips uh, of demand to be resisted, we're only calculating something around 51 kips here. So there is a real disconnect uh, between those two. Now, that 138 kips is a very large number. And people were wondering for a long time, is that you know really even a, a number that can be generated? And there's actually only one test data point uh, we have in the entire world for, that can shed some light on this. And this is in the 2009 Nicewood Capstone test that was conducted in the world's largest shake table facility over in Japan. Uh, this was a project spearheaded by Professor John Bandelin at a Colorado State University that we participated in. Um, and it consisted of a six story light frame structure being tested under maximum considered earthquake level demand. From that testing, we had measurements on the uh, Simpson ATS system, the continuous tie down rods that were in the structure. And we were able to get the actual peak demands that were generated during this MCE level event. 
and you see a number over here of 173. That's 173 kips on two rods. These were side-by-side -side shear walls over here. Interestingly enough, on the exterior of the building on a higher aspect ratio shear panel, a single rod developed 123 kips of tension, peak demand during the MCE level event.